Here's the combination. This is a 468 sort of big block Chevy. He actually said it's a 4350 bore, which means it's pretty, pretty much the block is out of its life. Um, it has a stock steel crankshaft that's in it. Um, so this is not an aftermarket at all. It actually has stock rods. So he said it's their dimpled ones and they have ARP rod bolts. Um, the pistons are an SRP. The domes are huge. They've got to be. Um, this thing yielded between, I think it's like 13 and a half to one. Since it's still somewhat of a smaller cubic inch for a big block Chevy, um, I think it's like 13 and a half to one, but the domes are like 42 or something cc's. The only bad part about this dome is the spark plug notch is in the way of these heads. And these heads are an AFR 305 head that are completely stock. And I'll show you the flow numbers here in a second. The problem is the spark plug comes real close to um, that notch on the piston. So we end up having to index the plugs and on some we had to actually pull them back out of the way because especially number eight it kept closing up the gap but there's that um the intake is a yn team g and i think it's a pos but that's what he had and you can't argue with the results it still did well it's not port match it's not ported it's nothing what you see there is a two inch um, pro comp tapered spacer and you've got up top 1150 holly dominator carpet that was redone by mark whitener i did the camshaft for it and i'll show you the cam specs in a sec but it's a solid roller deal um but anyway i'll show you all that here in a second but that's pretty much the rundown of all the engines i've ever done this is probably and i shouldn't say done i didn't build this but of all the engines i'm showing you this is probably the easiest and probably the cheapest ones most you can redo when you look at this the engine itself like if you do the short block you probably picked up get something close to this for like three or four thousand um, dollars and then the heads are more expensive than that so you have more money in the heads than you do in the actual short block so this is really an affordable engine i think the whole all in cost you're maybe seven eight and that's everything so and that seems still pretty high but you could probably do it cheaper and get similar results but man this thing for the amount of power it makes for what it is it's pretty good because there's a lot of engines that spent twice as much money that don't make this power but anyway, that's the engine. Let me show you the head flow, and then I'll get to the camshaft and power numbers. Since this customer bought the heads from me, they are box stock AFR 305 heads, but every head I sell, so if you buy a head, whether it be ported or not ported, I will flow to my flow bench, and you get an actual flow sheet for your heads um, whenever you buy it from me, and so I have its flow numbers. So a big block has a long runner and a short runner, we have a long runner here. It only flowed 349 at um, 700 lift, and the short runner was pretty bad, 330 at one inch. If you do it at 700, it's only well, 314. So really, really not great on the short runner. And then if you look at the exhaust, it does 261 actually, and that's at 800, and then it drops off. And this is without an exhaust pipe. So there's the flow numbers for the heads. Here's the camshaft. Uh, this is a custom comp one that I spec for a customer because I do sell custom camshafts. So this one is a 263, 260, or 274 on exhaust. It's 112 lobe separation, 788 lift on about intake and exhaust. It says 787, but they're pretty, pretty much the same. Um, you can obviously go get this camshaft yourself if you want to as well, but just sharing this with you. So if you got something similar to this, this makes pretty good power. So there you go. Here are the Redino results. Now, this first one you're seeing right here is an 850 CSU carburetor. And the reason why is because initially we were having some problems with um, ignition stuff. And let me explain what happened. He had a billet MSD distributor, but the problem was uh, he lives kind of out in the country and a mouse had chewed the wires on those deals. So he replaced the innards in it. And um, anyway, he had the wires reversed. So the, in other words, the signal coming out of the MSD billet distributor was reversed what it should be. Well, it was doing some weird stuff, and it took us a while to figure that out. So in the meantime, we thought maybe it was the carburetor, so we put on the dyno carburetor, which this one just happened to be an 850 CSU that Gary uses at um, his dyno shop, does with machine shop. So, but it was still doing it, and it took us some time to figure out, hey, it just, he just reversed the wires. We changed those, and boom, we started making power. So... This is the best it got with the 850. This ended up being, I think, 36 degrees of timing. We Another mistake that was made is we he had the timing point in the wrong spot, but so we couldn't tell exactly what the timing is. So I say 36, but it's really hard to say exactly. 
but um, we know for sure it had way too much timing in the beginning because at some point earlier on in the testing, it was really, really bad. And we would take out four degrees of timing and gain 20 horsepower. So, and we kept doing that and doing that. So luckily um, it could have been bad, but this is the reason why you should run really good um, fuel whenever you're doing any of the testing at all. But uh, yeah, anyway, it looks good. This is what you get. You get 720 horsepower at 6,900 RPM, actually 721 at 6,800. And torque came in at four, 590, what we can call it 591 at 5,600. I would ignore this air-fuel ratio. This is calculated. So if you think this comes from O2 sensor, it does not. Instead, what it's doing is it's coming from um, a calculated deal. So you have an air turbine that spins and that measures how much airflow, as you can see in this graph here, 862 CFM out of an 850 carburetor. You can tell there's something, we're pulling more than that carb can even handle. But anyway, it takes the air and then it takes the amount of fuel that went through and then it calculates the air-fuel ratio. I think it's fuel meters wrong, if I'm being honest, because that sounds right. That sounds way wrong, and that's why this is wrong. Um, but I don't doubt that it was lean. I just don't think it was that lean, like 14s. So, um, could we have jetted up on this carburetor? Yes, but this was just a dyno carburetor. This is not the carburetor he's going to use. So, the next thing we did was, you know what? He brought a Dominator, and that's the one that we he was going to run anyway. So, guess what? We put it on. And you know, like I said, the Dominator, it makes more power every time. Every time. Here's the Dominator power. So, this is 1150 Holly Dominator. Now, this was redone by Mark Whitener. So, he put on different fuel bowls, did read some recalibration and stuff. And I think he made it a two-circuit. But you went from a 721 to a 741. Now it does have a two inch HB8 or not two inch Pro Comp tapered spacer, just because that's what I have. Um, but yeah, that bumped the horsepower up quite a bit. The torque, however, really didn't change. It's still only 592, but it did move it up. So now it's at 6100 RPM. Because if you compare that to this, remember it was at 591 at 5600. So it raised where peak occurred at. So. Um, this goes back to some of the people like, well, your cam, you know, your cam's dictating when the, uh, peak torque will occur, peak horsepower. Well, you can have other factors that can make it look like it's the camshaft, but it's not the camshaft. Obviously the carburetor raised its peak, um, torque up. So there's more to it in play. But anyway, that's this and yeah, really good power, really good power. But let's show me, the, I'll show you the overlay. Now, again, these air fuel ratios are totally wrong because there is no air hat hooked up on the dominator. You can kind of go by your brake specifics, but not quite. It looks pretty close. I was watching because we did have an O2 sensor. I was watching it because this took a jet out. So in the very first pull on the Dominator, um, it was looking rich, especially at the lower RPMs. And you can kind of tell when it's rolling in. So I took out two in the front and four in the rear. And that got me this. And this brought it to 12.8 at peak. And for the most of it, it's between 12.2 to 12.8. So right at the end, it's about 12.8. So that plays a part when I show you this graph here. Because if we look at this right here, this is your difference between the Dominator and the 850, 4150 carburetor. And you would say, well, look here, because the red line is the Dominator and the black line is the CSU carburetor. So we have a 1150 versus an 850. And I can already tell some people are going to think wrongly about this. They're going to look at this red line and say, see, the 850 is better at the torque at the lower RPMs and horsepower. That is not true. It's because of the air-fuel ratio, which it's really hard to see on this. But I'm rich. So if there was a way for me to, to lean out the Dominator in this range, which I'm sure I could with air bleeds and stuff, but he doesn't, again, this is a drag race engine, so he's never really... Functioning too much in this range, so it could care less. But that's the reason for this. It's not the CFM. It's not too big a carburetor. It's um, it's too rich there, and it needs to be leaned out. So, but as you can tell, once we get to the, this is a great torque curve, by the way. Look how it's a flat, but it rises. But it's that is a very, very, very good torque curve, and that's what you want to see. That's a good deal. That's nice. And of course, you can see how much more it makes with the Dominator. So there's your power stuff. Ready? Go ahead.
So there's the motor. Like I said, you guys could totally do this because I've seen several engines like this on Facebook Marketplace. Now they may not, I mean, actually I've seen ones with dome pistons. As a matter of fact, I think this guy actually bought this engine from Facebook Marketplace. The only thing he changed is he had the, uh, the uh, he went through it. So he had Gary redo the short block. So then that's when they bored it out to a little bit bigger because of the wear and then put the bigger pistons in. But this is stock crank, stock rods, only thing modified is pistons. And this thing's good. I mean, it makes an insane amount of power. I mean, I don't know if I'd put a nitrous shot on it just because I think the cylinder walls are pretty thin, but th this is pretty incredible. I mean, I'm telling you, and I know I've said this before earlier in the video, but of all the engines, this is probably the most bang for the buck one I've, I've, I've done and that I've had on the dyno. Now, by the way, I should point this out. Um, I didn't build this engine. So you see it colored yellow, and usually whenever you see a yellow engine, it means I built it. I didn't. And one of the reasons why you ask why I do yellow is because I could see oil leaks. So it, it started early on when I was super young, and I've just kind of continued it. However, I hardly ever build engines at all anymore. I mean, I really don't. But this guy had, had done with build the short block, and he put the rest of it on there, and I went to help with the dyno session to do some tuning stuff. I want to point this out because I don't think it gets said enough. The dyno session is worth its weight in gold. Here's what I mean. He probably spent, he paid me to go to the dyno shop. He also paid Gary for the dyno work. It, I don't know how much the total bill was, but let's say it's less than a thousand. He came in that engine on the very first run. First off, wouldn't even run. If you were in the vehicle trying to figure this out, you would have spent days. We spent two hours just to get the bugs to work out so it run. The first pull, it made like 616 horsepower and 516 foot-pounds of torque. That's a pooch. When it left, it left at 740 and 592. Dino time is worth more than having your heads ported. And I'm a head porter. And I, I'm telling you, it's worth it. Now, if you're like, man, I got an engine. I like to see what it do on the dyno. Fine. Hit me up. I'll try to schedule an appointment with Gary. And, I, and I'll go there and I'll help with the tuning and stuff on it. Now, obviously, I charge. But if that's something you're interested, yes, I do it. But um, please, even if you don't do it with me, and I, I totally get it, um, go get it dyno tuned before you get in the car because it would suck so bad, especially if this was in my S10. Let's say you had a big block in S10, you really don't have room. Good luck. You would have been fighting it forever. But anyway, longer, longer me rant at the end. But guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman. I do not port cast iron heads. You guys take care.